In this video, we're going to continue on with our long-term athlete dashboard project and start to lay the framework for our scoring charts on the right-hand side. These charts are going to display the athlete's score as well as a visual representation of that score. They are going to be completely modifiable with up to five tests and dynamic titles. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And as a reminder of how far we've come in the last video, what we did was finish off our KPI charts here which basically show our long-term metrics based on this filter that we can update with any of the metrics that we want to take a look at and our charts will automatically update. Now, if you remember back to a previous video, when we created this filter bar, we had built in a space where we can start to create score charts here on the right-hand side. And these score charts are going to allow us to select different tests and then display a score out of 100 for those tests. So where I like to put these tests on this particular dashboard build is if we just come over from the athlete card, I take two basically rows and three columns across and I'm just going to merge that and center it. And then I'm going to put a box around there and then I'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, rows come across three columns and put a box around there as well. So that's going to be the frame of our score charts. Now the way that I like to do the title for my score charts is in this box here. I usually just type equals and then where it says score chart one, I will just hit enter there. And this allows me to now change this to whatever I want this score chart to be titled. I'll center it. Um, put it in kind of the middle. I'll probably make the text Lado like we've been using before, make it a heck of a lot bigger and then bold it. And now we have a spot for our actual power score. And then finally, the second thing that we're going to need here is just a box where if you can remember from the intro video, we have the number displayed in the middle of our chart. So I'm basically going to put that um, box in right now and I just take the center four rows and I'm going to just merge those and put a box around them just so you can see where those are. But when we type in our number, let's say 56, and then I center this, put it in the middle, put it back to Lado, maybe bold it and make it a heck of a lot bigger. You can see that's where our score is going to sit as we um, create this chart, 100 will look like that, etc. Okay, we're going to have a formula in there that actually pulls out the chart, but that is basically the outline for our chart. What I can do is just control C and control V, control V and copy that one more time, and then just fix these cell references so that they reference chart two and reference chart three. So that's going to lay the framework for our actual score charts. When we actually put the charts in there, we'll remove this box from the middle. So part two of this video is we're going to go to our data viz reference. And if you remember this sheet, what we're going to do is just scroll all the way over to the side and I'm going to add a whole bunch of columns to the right because this is going to give me a space to basically do this score chart. So I'll just keep inserting columns to the right and then I'll delete the ones that we don't need, but this should give us enough space to kind of do that now. And what I want to do is I'm going to take this title from my long-term chart three and copy and paste this over. And I only want it to cover basically six. So one, two, three, four, five, six columns. And if I scroll over now, what I'll do is just delete this last column. So we don't need that one. I'll delete all of these columns actually, all of these extra ones that we added. I just come all the way over here, we'll delete all of those. And in here, we're going to add a box for athlete name. So I'll copy and paste that over um, from right here. And you can see that that's automatically done that for us. And then the second thing I like to put in here is just another box. And we're going to actually um, I'll just name these test scoring and we're going to actually name these the chart that we're creating. So instead of long-term chart three, 
What I'd like this to be called is if I type equals, go back to my dashboard and whatever we're naming this score, so in this case power score, we will have it like that. And the first box that we're gonna need, and I'm going to use these boxes so everything kind of looks the same, is the date. And then the next one, we're gonna add these all the way down. And I think we have space for up to five tests. So we'll do test one through five, test three, test four, test five. Now there's some information that I'm going to need to pull out from this dashboard. So the first piece of information I'll need is the last test. And the second piece of information I'll need is the value of that test. And then we'll create our score. And then we'll create our total score. And we'll create a difference. So these are all of the boxes where we're actually going to type in some data. So what I'm gonna do is just give these um, basically some borders just so that we know where the heck everything's going. And now we're gonna just start to fill this out. So for our date, that should be pretty easy for us to find. If we go to this date tab or this date column where we want, I'm gonna just go in there and type equals. I'll go back to my dashboard. And if you remember on our actual filter, we have a spot where we're selecting the date for these tests. In this case, it's in C7. When I hit enter, we're going to pull the date into that box. I'm just going to center it so it looks nice. I'll center all of these actually. And then test one through five, if I type equals, go back to my dashboard, test one is going to be stored in B8. And I should be able to just drag this down and it should give me all of my tests. So in this case, we should have counter movement jump, squat jump. I will fill this up. We'll put 10 meter sprint in there, um, bench press 1RM and maybe clean 1RM. So if we go back to our data viz, we should see all of those tests entered. Let's just bold these. Now the first calculation that we're going to have to do is we need to find out if this is our test date, 2021-01-03, when was the most recent time that this athlete performed that test, um, if it is not any more than this date here. So what I mean is, if we perform this test on 2021-01-04, we wouldn't wanna pull that value because it is more recent than the date that we're actually looking for. So we'd wanna pull out every date up to this one and every date smaller than it, and we want the last time that they performed this test. So we're gonna use a function here called max if. And what it's going to do is allow us to calculate what's the max date based on um, a host of different criteria. So I'll go into this first box here and I'm just gonna make my formula bar a little bit bigger so we can see. So how this is gonna work is I'll type equals max ifs, open this up and I'll open this question mark block so we can follow around. It's going to ask me what is the actual range that we want to return. And we want to find the date. So we're going to type index, open this up, and we want to index all of our data. If you remember how we were doing this in our filter formula, it's the same way. So index data, comma, comma, and we want to index it when it matches the word date. So we're gonna type match, open this up, and quotations, date, quotations, we want to find that in headers. Whoops. We want to find that in titles. Sorry, I forgot what my value was. So in titles and then zero, close that off, close the whole thing off. So what we're saying right now is we want to find the max of our data when the column is the date column. Now when I hit comma, it's going to ask me what my criteria range is. And the first criteria that we want to put on this is we want to find this um, date when it is less than or equal to 2021-01-03. So I know I'm going to be looking at the date column again, so I can just copy this and paste it one more time and then comma. Now a little trick when we're doing our first criteria, whenever we're working with um, max ifs, sum ifs, average ifs, etc., our Greater than, less than values have to be in quotation. So we're going to type quotation, less than, less than, or equal to quotation. 
And then to add a range, we use the and symbol and we're going to select our range, which in this case is stored in AF3. Um, oh, AF4, sorry. Okay, so when I close this off and hit enter, you can see that it's going to actually pull out our highest date, albeit it is stored as a number. So if I just hit format number and change this to a date, that is our maximum date that is less than or equal to this date here. And that makes sense because the maximum date would be that date. But for instance, we want to pull this out only if that athlete has a test. So we want to find the maximum date for this athlete. So if I go back to my formula and hit comma, the second criteria that we want to add here is that the data athlete name matches the athlete name that we've pulled out. So we'll do this index piece again. So we'll type index, open this up, data, comma, comma, match. And this time what we want to match for is athlete name in quotations, comma, we want to find it in titles, comma, zero, close that whole thing off, comma, and the criteria we want this time is that it matches our athlete name, which is going to be stored in AF2. I know this is always going to be stored there, so let's lock that in as well as our date. And now when I hit enter, nothing should change, okay? Then the last piece to this is we want to only find this when the test selected is not blank. So we want the maximum time they've done that test. If there was no value there, we do not want that date. So we'll do this index one more time. Index, open this up, data, comma, comma, match. And this time what we want to match for is actually the test name, which is going to be stored in AF5. Um, comma, we want to find it in titles, comma, zero, close, close, comma, and for this, to make sure that it's not blank, we're going to put quotations and then two arrow keys opening up towards each other, and when I close this off, we should still get our date, but if we went to our data, 2021-01-03 for counter movement jump, let's find that date, 2021 0103 for counter movement jump. If we made this blank, we should get 0102. And indeed we do. So we can see that this formula is working. So let's put that value back. And then from there, the only other thing that I want to do to this formula is wrap it in an if error so that if there are any errors with the formula that it actually just gives me a value of a blank cell. So at the beginning of the formula, we'll type if error open this up and at the end of it we're just going to put comma double quotation so it gives me a blank error when or blank cell when there is an error and I'll hit enter and because we've locked in the date and the athlete name I should be able to drag this formula down it should still work and give us all of those dates okay so that's part one and then part two for this video is now we're going to use this formula to pull out the actual value that happened on that date. So what this is going to look like is we're going to use a filter formula here and we've used this before, but I'll go under my values and hit equals filter, open this up and I'll kind of go up to here so we can see. And the first thing we want to filter out is the actual um, test. So I'm going to type index, open this up data, comma, comma, match open this up we want to pull out the test so i'm going to select af5 i know it's always going to be an af so i'm just going to lock in the first part of this um, formula i'll hit comma and we want to look for it in titles and then zero close it off close it off now we want to filter it when few conditions are true. The first thing we want is we want to filter it when the athlete name matches and then the date matches. So we'll type um, index, open this up, data, comma, comma, match, open this up, athlete name, comma, we want to find it in titles, zero, 
close that whole thing off and then we want it when it is equal to the athlete name that we have chosen and I'm going to put a lock around that and then the final condition here will be when the date matches so we'll go index data comma comma match open that up quotation date quotations titles zero and we want this when it matches the date and if I close this off and hit enter it should give me the value for that test and if I were to drag this down I'll get the value for all those tests the only other thing to do to this formula now is wrap it in that if error so we're going to type if error open this up at the end comma double quotations close it off and I should be able to just drag that down as I did the other formula so that's where we're going to stop today we have pulled out the maximum date for the test we've selected based on the date that we want to look at as well as the value for that actual um, date and test and athlete selected so in the next video what we'll do is convert these to a score and then calculate out the values so that we can actually make our chart and display that information on our dashboard we're almost at the end here and if you have been enjoying this series if you could like and subscribe to the channel that would really help me out and it helps me keep the channel growing and if you have any ideas or comments just leave them in the comment section down below i will see you in the next video and thank you for watching